Birds and butterflies add color and excitement to your yard. Their presence indicates that you have a healthy ecosystem, which includes a variety of caterpillars. And you can't get birds and butterflies without caterpillars. To attract butterflies, you want them to lay their caterpillar eggs on your native plants, creating future butterflies. And caterpillars attract birds. While many birds eat seeds and berries, nearly all birds feed live prey that are young. Caterpillars are prized baby food because they are soft, easy to eat, and nutritious, just like human baby food. And baby birds eat a lot of caterpillars. A tiny Carolina wren will feed nearly 500 caterpillars each day to their nestlings. Getting birds and butterflies to your yard is simple. Make your yard attractive to caterpillars. In this video, we discuss how to attract caterpillars to get more birds and butterflies in your yard. Plants, like you and me, do not want to be eaten. To combat this, plants have developed defenses against things that would eat them. For example, milkweed plant contains toxins and emits a sticky white sap that can seal a bug's mouth shut. However, over thousands of years, caterpillars have adapted to defeat the native plant defenses. Monarch caterpillars are not only tolerant of milkweed's toxins, but also absorb the toxins and make monarchs less tasty to predators. Monarch caterpillars also develop eating techniques to avoid the sap. While humans can eat many things, each caterpillar type has evolved to eat only a few plant species whose defenses they can defeat. Some caterpillars eat only one plant species. For example, monarch caterpillars can only eat milk. To attract caterpillars, you must grow plants that caterpillars have evolved to eat. That is, you must grow native plants. In this video, we discuss some advantages of native plants. Native plants support birds, caterpillars, and pollinators. Animals and insects rarely get proper nutrition from non-native plants, and some non-native plants are actively dangerous to wildlife. Heavenly bamboo, a non-native, is frequently planted for its beautiful red berries. However, those berries contain arsenic and poison birds that eat them. It takes a long time before non-native plants begin to integrate into our food web. We're talking many millennia, not centuries. Non-native plants might look nice, but like a plastic bush, they support very little wildlife. Our native plants have adapted to survive in our region and typically have a deeper root system to help survive droughts, which has the added benefit of reducing water runoff. A variety of native plants will interconnect your yard, making it more supportive of birds and butterflies. Your trees can support more wildlife by allowing leaf litter to accumulate by the base of the tree. This should be leaf litter, not store-bought mulch. The mulch mound that many people put around their trees protect bugs and burrow into the trunk. But even with no mulch, when we have only clear turf around the tree, we are creating a barren desert for pollinators. 97% of caterpillars and other pollinators that live in the tree drop to the ground near the tree base to pupate. These bugs have evolved to hide in the leaf litter, and without that, they will die. In addition to leaf litter, plants near the base of the tree aerate the soil and allow pollinators to dig in so they can pupate. Old logs and trees provide great homes for pollinators. With all the fungi and insects growing inside them, trees are more full of life after they die. To maximize your tree wildlife productivity, allow leaf litter to accumulate, and at old logs and small shrubs near the tree base. Send me an email to this address and I'll send you information where you can buy native trees and plants. We bring our own reusable bags to the grocery store, but plastic bags still kept coming into our home. Because of the health and environmental impact of plastic on our lives, I decided I wanted our family to go plastic free. It's really easy to do and it creates a lot less clutter in your home. So here are my six tips for avoiding plastic bags. When I'm shopping for produce, whether at the grocery store or at the farmer's market, I keep it loose, baby. For smaller items, I like to use mesh bags like this, which you can either buy online or at the grocery store. For items like carrots, I opt for the loose option because it's one less bag. And then I take the greens and use them in stir fry. Whenever I can, I get our bread directly from our local bakery or at a grocery store that has a bakery. 
I asked them to slice a fresh loaf and then place the loaf in my reusable cotton bag. We buy in bulk to save money and we bring our own containers to reduce the amount of plastic cluttering our kitchen. Depending on the item, I either use a glass or a cloth container. But before I put anything in them for the first time, I have the container weighed. I write the weight, known as the tear, on the outside of the container so the weight of the container can be deducted from the overall weight of the item. We now avoid dry cleaning bags by using the green Garmento. It's an investment of just $9.99 and so worth it to avoid all that plastic. The bag is made of recyclable, non-woven polypropylene, which serves three purposes. A hamper for your dirty clothes, a duffel for transporting laundry and old hangers to the dry cleaner, and the hanging garment bag. Just request that your dry cleaning come back naked so that your clean clothes come back inside the hanging garment bag. When I order takeout, there are two ways I bring my own bag. When I order in person, I tell them, I've got my own bag, and I hand it directly to them. When I order over the phone, I tell them, I'm bringing my own bag. And then I make a point to get to the restaurant a little early so that when my order is up, they can put my order directly in my own bag. So what about all the other places we like to shop? Like the drugstore, the office supply store, the hardware store, the gift shop, or the clothing store. Why not use reusable bags there too? So to be sure that little broccoli florets don't co-mingle with my fair trade organic t-shirts, I designate specific bags for clothing shopping only. How do you dispose of cat poop if you're trying to eliminate plastic bags from your life? Since it's rare for a plastic bag to make it into my house, I put Loki and Thor's cat poop in a bag that's already destined for the landfill. And by that I mean a bag that is either lined, has a wax lining, or has food waste on it. And bags like that can't be recycled. Yeah, that's right. So bags that I'm talking about include, you know, things like pita chip bags or, you know, tortilla chip bags. I've got dog treat bags, um, cereal boxes, whoops. Cereal boxes, this plastic liner, I use that to put poop in. Crackers, again, a similar plastic bag. Pasta bags, I also use like bags like this for dishwashing detergent or laundry detergent pods. And I'll even use the occasional brown paper bag. And I use this because um, rather than putting it in my curbside compost, which I can do in my jurisdiction, I might as well just reuse this bag versus just, you know, sending it straight to waste. So, you know, once I'm done with my mushrooms, I just put some kitty poop in here. For some of us, it can be difficult to create and maintain erect standing arrangements of flowers. And that's why I use floral foam. Since I discovered floral foam, my flower arrangements stay up better and last longer. For those days when I am making flower arrangements, I keep floral foam on hand. Just one little green cube, and I'm ready when I need to be for as long as I need to be. Floral foam is a green fine cell thermoset phenolic plastic foam and may be irritating to the eyes, skin, and respiratory tract. Floral foam may contain formaldehyde and or carbon black. Prolonged exposure may cause cancer. Inhaling floral foam dust or fumes may cause irritation to the nasal passages, lacrimation, olfactory changes, and pulmonary changes, oh. inhalation of heptine. Oh my god, it's really that bad? I guess. I found their material safety data sheet online. I'm just reading off that. Blah. Look, just go to sistereden.com for healthier, safer options for you, your flowers, and the planet. Foam may cause violent vomiting and diarrhea. If swallowed, do not induce vomiting. Treat symptomatically and supportively. If a large quantity is ingested, get medical attention since there could be a problem with physical blockage. Floral foam formulation has not been tested for environmental effects and is not biodegradable. Ask your florist if floral foam is right for you. Hello, I'm Joelle Novi. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm with Interfaith Power and Light, through which 
Hundreds of congregations of all faith traditions are coming together to address climate change across Maryland, DC, and Northern Virginia. I'm happy to uh, offer today my tip for what is one green thing that an individual can do during Earth Month. Uh, lots of us who are climate activists get asked that all the time. I'm just one person. This problem is so huge. What can one individual do? So I want to challenge each of you today to, to find ways to connect with others, uh, to respond to climate change together, not alone. The first step in doing that is to talk about climate change and why it matters to us. And I know that for me, myself, that is harder than it sounds. So I want to invite you as your Earth Month challenge of the day to find someone in your life and open a conversation about climate change. Not about uh, science or data that you don't, that you're not familiar with, but just about why it matters to you. And my second challenge, once we've named the challenge that we face, once we've named the problem, um, we can join with others to build the movement we'll need to create a solution at the scale of this enormous problem. So I want to invite you to find a group that's working with you, near you, and sign up for their email list and get connected so they can call you to action over and over again over the years to come. So um, thank you for joining with others uh, today and throughout Earth Month. And thank you for being part of building the movement that we'll need to care for our neighbors and protect our common home.